Now it's time for the latest edition of our series, Women Mean Business. They were highlighting Kim Davis, the National Hockey League's Senior Executive Vice President of Social Impact, Growth Initiatives, and Legislative Affairs. Before we speak to her, here's a look at her story. A high school tennis player, Kim Davis channeled her tenacity on the tennis court into an impressive career. As an executive at J.P. Morgan Chase, Davis quickly made her mark, managing powerful men who were often much older than her. But her fearless leadership style set her apart. Davis then signed on to Teneo as senior managing director, advising Fortune 500 companies and executives. In 2017, she entered the sports arena, joining the NHL as senior executive vice president of social impact, growth initiatives, and legislative affairs. Davis's leadership and philanthropic work has made a major impact on the league over the past five years, and she promises there's more to come. Kim Davis is a woman who means business. And now Kim Davis, NHL senior executive vice president of social impact, Growth Initiatives and Legislative Affairs joins us now. Kim, thank you so much for being with us this morning. We're loving this series, and we're so happy to have you join us for it. So first, I just spoke about how you manage people at J.P. Morgan Chase. In some cases, people, men, were older than you were, which I think just on its surface sounds intimidating to anyone. And we love using this series to sort of hear how you navigated certain times in your life. Can you tell us how you sort of found your voice and were able to find a place at the table in an environment like that? What was that like? I was, good morning, first of all, Savannah. So great to be with you. Um, you know, when I think back on my career some 30 years ago, the thing that occurs to me is that I always felt like I deserved a place, uh, a seat around the table. And I was lucky enough to have both mentors and sponsors early in my career. And one of my first sponsors told me that uh, men suffer from the imposter syndrome uh, more than women do. And mm. that stuck with me. And so whenever I felt like my confidence was waning, I always remembered those words. Um, and that really helped me navigate some of those more difficult situations. I love the way that you just said that you always felt specifically that you deserved a seat at the table, because I think so much of the time, so many of us are just wondering, is there room, never mind even considering the fact that there should be. So, so just act accordingly. Um, you're known, you know, for now being in the sports world, and I think that's something as in many fields, probably the same thing could be said about J.P. Morgan Chase, but the sports world, something we certain often regard as male dominated. And I know that the NHL also didn't have much diversity going on. What was it like to enter that world and what's it been like to try to make real change in that regard? Yeah, I, I go back to that idea of mentors and sponsors. And when I talk to young people, I often distinguish between a mentor and sponsor mm. is a mentor being someone that tells you and a sponsor sells you. And I was lucky enough to have in the commissioner of the NHL, Gary Bettman, both a mentor and a sponsor. He both told me what I needed to do in order to be successful, but he also sold me to owners and presidents mm. of the clubs in a way that helped me to really accelerate my lack of hockey knowledge, but the competencies that I brought from 30 years of experience. Wow, we love this segment because there's always these little things that we can write down and remember to help us all out. And one tells you, one sells you. That's a good one. Um, when you talk about now the league being diverse and representative of everyone, I, I know that you've said this is a movement, not a moment. Explain you know, what that means to you at the NHL with the actual work that you're doing now, but also what it should look like across industries. Yeah, for the NHL, it, it's it's been perceived as a sport that wasn't necessarily for um, multicultural audiences and women. And in many ways, I think my work is to, to really burst that myth. Um, there's a rich history of blacks in the sport of hockey going back to the 1800s, as well as the first woman uh, back in the 1800s. Uh, it's an article in an in a, um, Ottawa magazine. So the idea here is to create these ambassadors all over North America and all over the world that love hockey and can talk about and tell their mm -hmm. stories about hockey. And that really 
means a movement that includes everyone that loves the sport of hockey and those that want to love the sport of hockey. Mm, I love that. Kim, you've already dispelled quite a few words of wisdom, but we do always like to end this segment by just asking for one specific piece of advice that a young woman who's watching this right now could kind of grab onto and remember as she's embarking on her career. Find ways to, to manage what I call the three Ps, your preparation, your passion, and your purpose. And not every job is going to provide passion and purpose, but when you are prepared and you find that integration of passion and pur purpose, you will be successful. This is what I'm saying. We always need to take notes during this segment, the three Ps. I love it. Kim Davis, thank you so much. Really an honor to have you join us for the segment. We appreciate your time this morning. So great to talk to you. Thanks, Savannah. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.